Perhaps the single most daunting area of electronic quality management system selection and implementation is software validation. Not all quality standards require or even cover software validation. That being said, software validation is a practice that delivers a much higher quality, more reliable product and implementation. Different EQMS developers use the term validation differently, and it's often ambiguous as to how systems are validated and what's included. Additionally, the terms verification, IQ or initial qualification, OQ or operational qualification, and PQ or performance qualification are often used. This video explains how FreeQMS is validated, which validated formats and scripts are included, and how industry terminology applies. Let's open Google in a browser tab. We're going to enter the term software validation and press enter. Although Wikipedia and some professional organizations have articles on software validation, we can see that the prominence of the FDA's guidance document on this subject means that the FDA has significant purvey over software validation for regulated industries. Let's click the link, General Principles of Software Validation, FDA. We will review this PDF. This is the FDA's guidance document on software validation. Note that even for the FDA, this is a gray area. FDA gives guidelines for validating software when it must be done, but even then leaves some leeway as to how much and what types of validation are required. We will cover more on that in a moment. Note this document was issued in 2002. There have been few updates in this regard, and other quality standards, such as those issued by ISO, have been hesitant to tackle the subject. From here, let's jump to page 6, specifically section 2.1, Applicability. We can see the FDA expects software validation to occur for the following areas. Of note is the last bullet point, software used in implementation of the device manufacturer's quality system. As FreeQMS is an electronic quality management system, the developers of FreeQMS interpret this to apply. Let's back up a minute though, because the situation becomes more complicated. FreeQMS, which does not allow customization, would be considered off-the-shelf software, a term the FDA uses regularly. We can see here in the last paragraph of Section 2 Scope, right before Section 2.1, where the software is developed by someone other than the device manufacturer, the software developer may not be directly responsible for compliance with FDA regulations. In that case, the party with regulatory responsibility needs to assess the adequacy of the off-the-shelf software developer's activities and determine what additional efforts are needed to establish that the software is validated for the device manufacturer's intended use. The developers of FreeQMS interpret this to mean that in the case of the off-the-shelf software, it is the responsibility of the user to validate. FreeQMS attempts to alleviate this burden by validating internally, providing copies of our executed validations and providing scripts customers may use to validate. So far, we've established that validation is required for software used to maintain the quality system, and that the burden of validation is on the manufacturer, which FreeQMS attempts to alleviate. Let's scroll to section 2.4. Regulatory Requirements for Software Validation This section covers regulations pertaining to software validation. We can see in the second paragraph that validation is required for software used in the manufacturer's quality system. Additionally, we can see in the fourth paragraph that any software used for a part of the quality system must be validated per 21 CFR 820.70. And finally, we can see in paragraph 5 that systems used to maintain electronic records must be validated 21 CFR Part 11. This is a big one for FreeQMS, and a standalone 21 CFR Part 11 validation is included. Before we review which validations are included in FreeQMS, we're going to look at a few more terms used by the FDA. Let's scroll to section 3.1.1, Requirements and Specifications. A requirement in the software world is an expectation of the system. FreeQMS uses the term requirement in validation documents to set a goal the software must hit during testing. Next, we're going to take a moment and review section 3.1.2, Verification and Validation. The FDA advises readers that the terms verification and validation are sometimes used interchangeably and sometimes taken to mean separate things. The FDA and the developers of FreeQMS take verification to mean testing done before the software is available to the public. With a system that cannot be customized, this burden does not fall on the manufacturer. The FDA and the developers of FreeQMS take validation to mean objective evidence that the software performs to stated requirements. FreeQMS performs said validations internally and makes scripts available to manufacturers to perform this validation. FreeQMS only discusses validation where users are concerned. 
Before we finish with the FDA's document, we're going to discuss section 3.1.3 IQOQPQ. The FDA in these two paragraphs echoes the feelings of the creators of free QMS. IQ, OQ, PQ, which stands for Initial Qualification, Operational Qualification, and Performance Qualification, is not terminology found in software development, nor is it common or directly applicable to software validation. When implementing FreeQMS, you may encounter industry professionals specifically in the realm of facilities and equipment installation that insist on using an IQ, OQ, PQ structure. If that is the case, we would recommend organizing validations in this manner. Initial Qualification For software, an initial qualification determines if the software is initially installed in the environment. Can it be reliably accessed? Can users log in? Are permissions accessible and configurable? Are required modules available? We will cover these items when we look at FreeQMS validations in a moment. Operational Qualification Are users able to create records? Can records be modified, approved, printed, etc.? From a software standpoint, operation covers the creation of records and the performance of actions that are operationally realistic to your environment. This is covered by FreeQMS's validations. Performance Qualification Executing a true performance evaluation with software can require extensive planning. The makers of FreeQMS understand a performance qualification to mean the creation, editing, and approval of live company records per company procedures using real company data and users. This would test the real performance of the system using live expectations. FreeQMS validations do not address a PQ in the equipment qualification sense, but can be modified to do so. We will cover this in a moment. This concludes our review of the FDA's guidance document on general principles of software validation. We would recommend anyone who wants to learn more about the FDA's expectations to read the rest of the document. We hope this review serves as a primer to our discussion of FreeQMS's validation. At this point, we're going to switch to FreeQMS to discuss which validations are included. Here we're logged into FreeQMS as someone with admin rights. Admin rights are required to view the validations panel. Let's click Validations. FreeQMS includes two types of validations, user executable validation protocols and internally executed validation protocols and reports. The validations in both areas are exactly the same. The validations in the top section are Microsoft Word files meant to allow manufacturers to execute their own validation. The validations in the bottom section are PDF files that include an executed validation and a report. We're going to download the executed 21 CFR Part 11 validation protocol to discuss how the validation applies to the FDA's guidance as an example and hopefully answer any questions about the validation of FreeQMS. We'll click the download button. Here we have the final report and executed validation for FreeQMS 21 CFR Part 11 validation. Let's go through this document and see how it applies to the FDA's guidance and general industry requirements for software validation. First, we can see this is a report. Its purpose declares that FreeQMS features perform as intended per the objective evidence. Remember, the FDA specifically called out that objective evidence is necessary for software validations. In nearly all cases, this will involve printed and signed records or errors produced within the system. We can see under Scope 2.2 that this report is written by the person who executed the validation. We can see under Section 3, Attachments, that the executed validation is attached. Finally, under Section 4, Report, we can see that all tests are accepted to the requirements and tests specified in Section 9, Requirements and Tests of the Reported Protocol. Remember, the FDA says validations must be performed to requirements through tests. We can see at the bottom, this validation is completed by Chip Curry, the lead designer of FreeQMS. If you are going to execute this validation internally, it's recommended that a person or team of people be selected who have some familiarity with software and quality assurance. If there is no one on staff with a quality assurance background, someone with experience in engineering or scientific testing is recommended. All FreeQMS validations and any other forthcoming documentation are controlled documents with a revision indicated by the year of release. 
This validation is for the 2020 release. 2020 release is the equivalent of a revision such as 1 or A on a controlled document. Here we can see the hard copy scanned approval page for the release of the FreeQMS 2020 Release System Security-21 CFR Part 11 validation protocol with the original signatures of involved parties. If you plan to execute this validation using the provided word copies, this validation should be released according to your internal procedures and signed by appropriate parties. Let's scroll down. We can see the objective of this validation is to generate objective evidence. Remember, this is what the FDA and other regulators are looking for. Under Section 2, Scope, we can see this validation applies specifically to 21 CFR Part 11. This means this validation addresses free QMS functionality specific to controls for electronic records, but it also serves as both an initial qualification IQ and operational qualification OQ of these features. More on that in a minute. Scrolling down, Section 3 provides a description of free QMS which can be useful during quality planning and risk assessment. Section 4 provides information on the validating user and environment. Note that auditors will almost certainly request information on backup and data retrieval policies for any eQMS system. Fortunately, FreeQMS is a web-based system backed up by Google's global system of data centers. There's no burden on the user to perform, document, or retrieve backups. Section 5 covers revalidation of FreeQMS. Revalidation of software systems is a growing field and, in our opinion, a large gap in most industries. FreeQMS will be revalidated internally on an annual basis. Revisions of validation documents are controlled by the year of release. For example, 2021 release or 2022 release. It's up to each organization to determine, document, and perform revalidation of software systems. Section 6 covers things outside of FreeQMS's control. Sections 7 through 9 cover the test procedures for FreeQMS validation protocol, including requirements. Remember the FDA's terminology, testing, objective evidence, and how to demonstrate it. Now we're going to cover something of particular importance to biotech manufacturers. Sections 9.2 through 9.6 establish validation test requirements for FreeQMS, but importantly also list which sections of 21 CFR Part 11 the requirements correspond to. Part of FreeQMS's design and development cycle was system-wide conformance to 21 CFR Part 11. All biotech customers should acknowledge this important validation. To look at how a test is conducted and to close our video, we'll scroll down to page 16. We will review this test as an example of those that are conducted while implementing FreeQMS. On the far left is the number column. This is test number 2. The numbers correspond to section heads in the requirement section in the start of the document. The requirement for this test is system access. We're going to test system access in a variety of ways for compliance with 21 CFR Part 11. The test column contains tests that will assess the requirement. These tests were created via a trace matrix to requirements in 21 CFR Part 11. We can see at the bottom of this column that these tests are specifically for subpart B, electronic records, section 11.10, controls for closed systems. The protocol contains steps for performing the tests, which in turn test the requirement. Let's quickly review this protocol. We can see in steps 1 through 3 that this protocol is requiring the user to log in to FreeQMS. The next steps, 4 through 11, cover a variety of login scenarios that produce different error results and finally allow the user to successfully log in. All FreeQMS protocol sections are structured to do three things in addition to their stated purpose of generating objective evidence that requirements are fulfilled. Protocols serve as an initial qualification for organizations that must document that way. The system is initially qualified in this example because a user can see that it is up and running, the login page is presented, and ultimately the user is able to log in. Protocols serve as an operational qualification. The system is operationally qualified because the user is able to input text into the fields and the system generates errors when text is inappropriately entered. The user is able to operate the system as expected. Protocols address risk. What if a login is entered incorrectly? What if a user tries to log in too many times? Risks are parallel to the requirements set out by the regulatory standard, in this case, 21 CFR Part 11. The system is at risk if it does not operate according to these requirements. Make use of the validation protocols when completing risk assessment. Protocols do not serve as performance qualification out of the box. If your company acquires a PQ as part of its quality and risk system, 
then the simplest way to address this requirement is to modify the Microsoft Word version of the included validation protocols to use real system logins, such as those of users in the quality department and to use real company records. The furthest right column, Acceptance, contains criteria to accept the test based on objective evidence. We can see here the required result, System Access, is controlled. Then we can see the required objective evidence. More on that in a moment. Next, we can see the person executing the test has accepted the test and then printed their name, title, organization, added their signature, and dated the protocol. Let's take a look at an example of objective evidence. In the protocol column under step 4, the system asks us to capture an error, print the error, find, circle, initial, and date the error, then to label the print test 2.4, print our name, sign, and date. This print is to be attached after the last page in this test. This is the objective evidence that the system performs as intended. Let's scroll to page 24 of this document. From the header field at the top of the browser window captured by this print, we can see that the user is trying to log in a FreeQMS. In the middle of the print, we can see the FreeQMS login screen and the error that is produced when a user fails to enter a complete email address. We can see this error we outlined in blue ink, then initialed and dated. At the bottom of the print we can see, once again in blue ink, that this test is labeled as test 2.4 and the person executing the test has written their name, signed, and dated. In the bottom right corner is an industry best practice. Screenshots are not automatically numerated, so the user has added a page 1 of 1. If we continue to scroll through the document we will see all of the attached objective evidence required for test 2 until we arrive at test 3. All validations are structured and conducted in the same manner. We hope this in-depth video answers questions as to how FreeQMS is validated and which validations are included in the 2020 release. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon.